A business cycle is typically thought of as fluctuations of the economy in terms of output, growth or employment around its long run trend. Over the long run, the economy will tend to grow at the rate of productivity growth, but in the short run, there may be demand or supply shocks that lead to output growth and employment, and indeed inflation, deviating from long run targets. There's no automaticity about these things. The business cycle may last a few months or several years, but these fluctuations do exist. And economic agents have to work out how to plan in the presence of these fluctuations. In general, we think agents don't like variance. They don't like things to move a lot up or down. They'd prefer something to be the same rather than have it three or four percent above or below average from time to time. And so we're trying to understand what is the cost faced by an individual when their level of income, when the level of output, when the level of employment changes by two or three percent over the business cycle. If we can work out how much it costs them in terms of their view of their welfare, we can then calculate how much of an insurance premium they'd be prepared to pay to offset that business cycle. In the very same way as we may take out insurance so that our income is stabilised in the presence of a health shock, or we may take out employment insurance in case we lose our job. In the same way, a business cycle is a way of thinking, um, or rather pricing a business cycle, is a way of thinking about how much an individual or representative household would be prepared to pay to offset the variance that we can reasonably expect there to be in their employment or their output or their consumption patterns year to year. So the calculation I'll outline in the lectures about the costs of business cycle um, is relatively simple. It's going to be a term in the variance of the factors I've just discussed, employment, growth, consumption, multiplied by some term in how risk averse people are. How much, risks do peop how much do people really dislike risk? If we look at these two factors, we tend to end up with a number. The number we end up with is surprisingly small, less than 1% of consumption. But it turns out when we know that in reality, people spend a lot of time talking about business cycle fluctuations. We don't have to read the newspapers or turn on the TV to, the, to examine the extent to which commentators and people are concerned day to day about fluctuations in output and growth. There therefore seems to be some disconnect between the perception of the cost of the business cycle and the actual cost if we go away in a hard-nosed manner and calculate it. And one of the reasons for the differences is that in our calculations we deal with a representative household. In reality, of course, there's not a representative household. There's great heterogeneity. There are people on low incomes, people on very high incomes, and they will suffer disproportionately from a business cycle. And the representative calculation I portray, which is on average, does not in any way capture the cost of a business cycle as it is borne by those in the lower sectors, lower income sectors of society. So I want to sort of unpick the answer because at some level I believe it, and at some level it is also a false depiction of the cost of a business cycle.